chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Bill Arrakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for your testimony, uh, gentlemen. Uh, uh, Mr. Cosner, uh, again, thank you for sticking with this. Uh, it's got to be very frustrating <laughs> after 15 years. <laughs> uh, I've been concerned uh, uh, regarding your plan. I've been just, uh, I've been just concerned about the dispersants uh, and their effect on the ec ecosystem. Yes. Does your plan uh, avoid using dispersants or minimize using dispersants? It, it, do it doesn't require using disbursements. We, would, we, we want the oil to come to the surface. I think if dispersants are used, and we don't include that in our plan, it should be as a last line. Uh, and that call should be a difficult one to make. But we, if, we, if we create a rapid response, an overwhelming response, we should be re able to re recover a majority of that, of that oil. And that is another reason why we, we created a last line of defense that's sitting on the shore waiting, really effective boat. So yeah, we, the, when you disperse, the only, you're not getting rid of the toxicity of the oil. The only thing you're doing is breaking it up and allowing it to spread into the ecosystem a lot quicker. The point of dispersants has always been almost a, number one, it gets it out of mind and out of sight really quickly. So there's that aspect. Mm -hmm. But the, the other reason they talk about dispersants and the reason why I think they've been effective in uh, having them work is because the claim is if we don't disperse, it will travel along the surface of the ocean quicker and get to your beaches quicker. And that scares everyone. Mm -hmm. And so everyone naturally goes, yes, well then disperse. But we do not require dispersant. We do not require burning, because burning does nothing to get rid of the toxicity either. It simply creates a, uh, a more airborne pollution. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tafaro, uh, your testimony echoed many of uh, the sentiments, particularly in the, in the area as to uh, the information sharing and exchange by the unified command with local governments. And I've heard these same sentiments in the state of Florida. Based on your experiences, what recommendations would you make to enhance communications, uh, resource allocation, and overall responsiveness in the event another disaster of this magnitude occurs? Well, one, one recommendation that I would put forth for consideration is to have uh, a national logistical uh, program that identified resources ahead of time and had those resources uh, in a logistical downstream chain uh, instead of having to then scurry through in response to an, to an incident uh, to, find, to find resources and allocate them accordingly. Uh, that should be, uh, that should be a, a, a paramount uh, preparation uh, issue or item for any agenda for any uh, operational uh, oil and gas company, uh, as well as combining with um, all of the federal agencies that have oversight uh, to and regulatory authority over those industries. Thank you. Uh, as a follow-up, in addition to looking back after disaster response to make changes to plans and procedures going forward, I believe that it is necessary to use lessons learned as they are happening to correct deficiencies and response while it's ongoing. In your experience, as you raise issues about the lack of responsiveness or unavailability of resources with Unified Command, were they capable of changing the way they operate to address your concerns and to be more responsive? In our, in our experience, they were not. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we sat across from a Coast Guard uh, command individual who who stated they would like to go further, but they were legislatively restricted. Uh, I think one of the one of the issues that we've learned at the local level and try to promote that to the national level is that uh, in after action reports, uh, we oftentimes promote legislation based on the most current scenario, and that leaves us short for the next the next disaster that transcends the previous one. So if we, if we are not proactive in looking at, as Mr. Costner said, well, if you had one deep, deep water horizon issue, do we have capacity to, to respond? What if we have five? Can right. we do that? So over, overplaying within the legislation, if I can, uh, one of the things that, that, again, we borrowed the lessons learned from Katrina is that there, there has to be, because uh, in my estimation, 
uh, we as, as individuals are hard pressed to come up with legislation that fits every disaster that we may have. But there, there should be a way for legislation uh, to grant authority when we come up against a disaster that transcends the current legislation's parameters to act reasonably and to re act responsibly. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for your testimony, gentlemen.